Service has always been really important to me. Um, it's through volunteer service um, that I changed my, my own life. I grew up um, here in this community and I struggled academically. I, I almost failed every grade. Really? That's so surprising. Yeah, I've, well, I failed ninth and 10th grades. Wow. Um, you know, later in life, I was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Okay. But when I was young, I was just struggling and failing in school and I didn't know why. Um, but I had a mentor who encouraged me um, to volunteer with, with homeless kids. And so one afternoon I went to the Orlando Union Rescue Mission for Battered Women and Children. And I volunteered and I was insecure about volunteering because I didn't think that I had anything to contribute. Mm -hmm. And I um, questioned, you know, I was a teenager, I was failing in school, I had never read a book, what could I possibly contribute? I get to the shelter, there's a dozen homeless kids who are so excited that I've shown up to hang out with them. Um, we had an amazing day. We played on the playground in, in the back of the shelter. I read books aloud. Um, a little girl named Ashley sat on my lap and we immediately bonded. And I had a couple of revelations that day that changed my life. The first revelation was I, I looked around and no one else had shown up. I was the only volunteer there that day. Oh. And I realized that even though I didn't think I had much to contribute, that the act of showing up was what was really important. And that by showing up, I was communicating to those kids that they had worth and value. Yeah. I also realized that even I had a role to play and a contribution to make. So I left the shelter that day and um, I never failed another class. And I felt like just inspired to go and communicate to other young people like me. Um, and, and I really started with like homeless youth or other kids who were struggling in school. This message that despite what they might feel about themselves, um, they have a role to play and a contribution to make. Yeah. So right after 9-11, a handful of us got together and we talked about how amazing would it be if we were to mobilize millions of people to volunteer on the one year anniversary of 9-11. Right. It seemed like a crazy idea. And we spent a lot of time questioning whether we could do it, how would we do it. Now, are you talking regionally or, or nationally? No, we thought, what if, what if millions of people all over the world okay. would fan out on the one year anniversary and volunteer? We were inspired by the heroes, the ordinary people, fire, police, rescue, ordinary citizens, right. who on September 11th, instead of running out of the buildings, ran back in. They ran back into burning buildings to save people's lives who they had never met and mm -hmm. didn't know. And not just one or two people did that, you know, it was hundreds of people right. who showed us what it meant to be a hero. And we thought, that's what we can do. We can transform 9-11 into a day of service where we recognize what's the best in each of us, what's noble. Mm -hmm. And we can replace those images of terror with images of triumph and hope by having millions of people fan out across Bridgeton, across America, around the world, in solidarity with each other, doing volunteer work, right. serving each other. It sounds like an awfully large task. Did you have any real challenges, obstacles? Did it go smoothly? So, um, we were kids. We didn't have any money. Um, we didn't have a plan but we felt like it was the right thing to do. So um, we started to make phone calls. You know, we called national organizations, we called our elected officials, 
um, I called my grandmother here in Bridgeton and she called different churches and we went and we would talk about this idea of organizing these projects on 9-11. We were making some progress, mostly in our heads. <laughs> and in May of 2002, Youth Service America, which is a national organization that organizes every year uh, National and Global Youth Service Day, which is the largest service day uh, for young people in the world annually. Mm -hmm. We called them up, and Steve Culbertson, the executive director of Youth Service America, said we could come to Washington and use their office space and that they would help us organize this day. With Youth Service America's help, they had lists of youth organizations all over the world in every country. And so we started to reach out, you know, to the YMCA of, of Ghana, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever these organizations were, there would be like a main uh, large scale youth organization. Um, we called people in uh, Israel, we called people in the Sudan, we called people in Russia, we called people all over the world. And we asked them to commit their organization to the coalition to organize the United Day of Service and to um, organize local projects. And we had um, projects registered in 150 countries uh, we had 650,000 registrants. In order to register a project, you had to have 20 people participate. Okay. So we knew that we were going to have millions of people participate. Right. Um, some entire state school systems participated. Um, like, I think Idaho, every school participated. And what we did is we created five simple projects that anyone could do. Um, a food collection drive for local food banks, mm -hmm. car washes, for local fire, police, and right. rescue. Um, people could plant trees. Um, so we had five projects that could be done at school. Families could do the projects together. There's a need right now to do more than we normally do. Like we all do things right. in our community. Um, we all participate in nonprofit organizations. But we're at a time when what we normally do just isn't enough. We're facing an unprecedented moment in our history, mm -hmm. and it's going to require all of us to extend ourselves and to engage in ways that might be uncomfortable. We're going to have to sacrifice something. Mm. We're going to have to engage. We're going to have to seek people out to support because they're not so obvious because folks are so isolated. Right. We're going to have to be very intentional about building community and, and organizing um, at a time when we're being encouraged by our leaders to stay home. Right, right, right. So when are you going to, um, when are we starting this? Right now. Right now. Yeah. We're starting right now. You know, so it's interesting that, you know, you, you compare, um, you know, serving. Yeah, you say stuff. You say a bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to say. You, um, you, you say, but like, serving is helping people, empower people, and empower you to become a better student. Um, it's empowering us when we're feeling, like, as you said, isolated at, at, at home. Um, you know, service, I think it was Gandhi who said something that service was, um, helps find self. Um, so it can help find who you are. Um, and as you said, in this environment, um, I think of a lot of people um, are struggling. Yeah. And I think Absolutely. the opportunity to serve with Hope Loft or other service um, organizations is going to be significant uh, in the regrowth, if you will, of, of our economy, our environment, sure. um, our, our lives. I, I believe that everyone wants to make a difference, that people want to um, get involved. You know, they'll, they'll see a story on the news about uh, a cause or homelessness or, you know, something, right? Mm -hmm. And they, they have an instinct of, of, of concern. Their heart 
bleeds. Yeah. And I think people are stopped by all the self-doubt. Like, who am I to do something? Right. Or uh, what could I possibly contribute? Yeah. We see stories all the time uh, where people in the moment, as in 9-11, um, people in the moment will act. You know, yeah. They will help their neighbor. Uh, right. They will help somebody in need. Uh, but when they're sitting at home, um, they don't necessarily think, as you're saying, you know, what can I really do? Yeah. Um, and you're showing them, hey, here's what you can right. do. I, I think sometimes we make an assumption that somebody else is doing it, mm -hmm. right? There's all these hungry people in the community who've lost their jobs um, and they don't have enough food on their table. Somebody must be doing something. Right. And what I've learned over and over again feeling like I'm not qualified enough to mobilize a response is that sometimes you're the only one and you can't wait for somebody else yeah. or think that it's someone else's responsibility. This, if we want our community to survive this, to thrive, um, we, we have to do it. Yeah, and it just takes one to start. Just one to start. That's all. Ordinary people. Yep. They make the difference. They do. Lisa, thank you very much. Thank it's been you, a pleasure Jane. talking with you. Thanks.